Who here likes potty training? Trick question, no one likes potty training. But it has to happen, right? We gotta potty train these dogs. So let's talk about how we did that with our dog, Pistachio. And hopefully what I have to tell you can either validate your experience or encourage you to try something else that might be effective. What I wanted to tell you at the start of this video is you are going to enjoy your dog so much more once they're potty trained. So if things feel hard right now, just know that once you get over that potty training hump and you have a dog that can roam the house without fear of accidents, it feels like a family member. It's a very special time. Like I always say, I'm not a dog training expert or a dog behaviorist. I am just a dedicated Havanese mama who has a potty trained dog. So I wanna tell you what we did and share my story with you as if you are my friend and hopefully can encourage you a little bit. Before I get into that, I want to give a little bit of background on pistachio and our potty training experience so that it helps inform some of these answers. So pistachio is our two-year-old Havanese baby. She's a female and we got her when she was about like two and a half months old. Our setup is that we do have a small yard, so a small green space that we wanted her to potty in. And I say this because I have gotten questions before about potty training in a more urban environment, and I just don't think that I am really the right person to answer those because we have always had the luxury of having a backyard and it's a whole nother deal when you always have to hook your dog up to a leash and basically go for a walk every time you're gonna potty train or litter box train, which is something people do and you should look into, might be a good option for you if you live in an apartment, but I know nothing about it. So I'm gonna talk more about the traditional backyard potty training experience. So let's just get right into the questions. How long did it take to potty train pistachio? Like always, I'm going to give you the honest answer and not the answer that sounds the best. And the honest answer is pistachio was about 10 months old when I felt like I could confidently say she was potty trained. Far before this point, I felt like she understood potty training. But getting the concept and applying the concept are kind of two different things. So by the time she was only three months old, a few weeks after we got her, I was like, this girl is getting it. We had about three weeks of her not having an accident and I got real cocky about it. And I was telling people that my dog was potty trained at three months. And then she kept having accidents. So 10 months was the point where we did not have accidents in our house on even a monthly basis. And the only times that would happen at home were if she was sick, like if she had diarrhea, or if we missed her signaling that she had to go out. And we'll talk about signals in a bit. They're very important. By six months, I felt like we were really, really close. We were only having accidents at that point about like once a month, I wanna say, on average. And then all of a sudden that would be broken by like three days in a row where she would have accidents. And I was like, what is happening? So you're gonna see a lot of forward progress and then you go backwards a little bit and then you make more progress and you go back a little bit. But by 10 months, we had a dog who signaled when she had to go outside, did all of her business outside and fairly quickly. So she knew the outdoors were for potty time. She could actually, eliminate on cue more or less if we said go potty she would know what that meant and she was now a dog who did not actually want to soil her at home den i tried really really hard to not have a baby in the background of this video but it's gonna happen that's the day that we're having so i'm sorry if you hear little baby noises in the background but sometimes you hear little dog noises in the background so it's it's one and the same how do you train a puppy to use pee pads so we didn't use pee pads. We did have a pee pad in her pen like the first week maybe that we had her just thinking that it might be good to not have her soil every part of this little picnic blanket that we put under her pen. But all she ended up doing was just tearing it up. She was a puppy so she just wanted to rip into things and we even taped down the edges and she would still tear it up. And she wasn't favoring that spot to use the bathroom anyways and we wanted her to potty outside. So we were kind of just like, what's the point? So I, I know other people aren't huge fans of pee pads either, and I'm not really sure the reason. Sometimes they get a bad rep. Maybe there's other reasons beyond that, but we just didn't use them because it wasn't actually where we wanted to teach her to use the bathroom, and she was getting into it. So we didn't use them at all. If you're wondering, well, what did you do when you had to leave the house and you knew she was gonna have an accident in her pen, she just had an accident in her pen. I think if you had to leave a puppy alone for a long amount of time, like longer than 
three or four hours, you might need a bigger enclosure than what we had so that if they have accidents in there, it's not like completely surrounding them in the space that they're stuck in. But we wouldn't leave Pistachio alone very long as a puppy anyways, so it was okay for her to just have a couple accidents in her pen and we cleaned them up when we got home. So speaking of pens, what is the ideal setup for bringing home a puppy slash potty training a puppy? Let me give you the rundown. So we had this pen set up in our living room because we wanted to make sure that she felt like she was part of the family, even though we'd have to keep her in this enclosure quite a bit. So the point of the pen was that we had a safe space to leave her when we couldn't immediately supervise her or when we just needed to get something else done or have a break. And this safe space is safe for them to have accidents, but it's also a space that keeps them from chewing on wires or getting into something as a puppy that could really hurt them. So we had this pen set up in our living room. We had her crate in a corner of the pen. We had her food dish. We even had like, we called it her bunny bottle, but it was like a really large hamster-esque water bottle that we hooked up to the side of her pen. And the reason we chose that is because we didn't want her to make a mess with her water bowl in her pen. It also kept her water very fresh, which was a nice thing. She figured it out immediately, like literally the first day we brought her home. So that was kind of cool. And we did eventually transition her to just a bowl of water and there was no training involved with that. She knew how to do both just instinctually. And then we had a little donut bed in there for her and we just threw some toys in there. And we always did toy rotations. We didn't just give her all of her toys at once because we wanted to keep toys feeling fresh and interesting. And then underneath all of this, we had a picnic blanket. So this picnic blanket was one that you might find on like Amazon that has basically like a tarp on the bottom of it so that, you know, outdoors, you wouldn't have moisture seep through it, but then indoors with a puppy, it meant any accident that she had on it wouldn't get to our floors. But it also meant it was still a very soft surface for her to sort of paddle around on. I would definitely recommend getting two picnic blankets because we frequently would switch these out and wash them in our laundry machine. Because like I said, she would have accidents on them. I am paraphrasing the next question, but I've gotten the essence of this question many times. Won't keeping them confined make them feel less like family? Let me tell you, having a dog that can roam the house freely without fear of accident is what makes them feel most like family. And the reason that we are confining their space in the beginning is because before you can open up your home to this little dog safely, both safely for your home to not have accidents in it, but also safely for your dog to not get into something that could hurt them, it's really important to restrict their space until they have gained your trust in a space. And we saw this in action with pistachio. So we started with just her pen. And then when she was more supervised, we gave her like the living room rug area. We set up a little barrier and that's where we would play with her and she could explore. But when they're puppies, everything is so new and stimulating that when you give them too much space, I have seen it either create way too many tantalizing options of things to go pee on or chew on, or it can actually create some anxiety of, I have all of this territory to protect or to monitor. It's just kind of overwhelming to them. So I always saw her thrive by us expanding her space slowly as she got used to a new area of the house at a time. The way that I thought of it was like, she had to learn that this was hers, that it was her home and that it was not a toilet. And when she would gain respect for a new space of our house, like gain respect of the rug area of the living room, she was like, I don't wanna go to the toilet here. This is an area that I play in and cuddle in. And like, we just hang out here. This isn't a toilet. Uh, and then that eventually turned into our whole living room and then our kitchen and then our first floor. I don't know if that's grounded in science, but it worked for us. So what's the process for taking them outside to go potty? So let's first talk about signals. So we had a bell that we sort of plopped inside of her pen in the early days. And this was because we were trying to create a very tangible signal for her. A signal is something that they do to let you know they have to use the bathroom. And before they know that they are supposed to go outside to use the bathroom, you do the signal with them before you let them outside. And the repetition of that helps them learn that it's associated with bathroom time. So every time that we would let her outside, we would take her little paw and we'd jingle the bell. Then we would open the door and we went outside before look there's the signal right now that's pistachio's doorbell hold on something we did that's completely optional we'd always have her wait to go out the door until we had gone out the door first like me or ben whoever was taking her out 
I'm not gonna get into how we did that right now, but it basically taught her to not sprint out the door because we didn't want a dog that was going to sprint outdoors every time there was an open door because that could really get her hurt if she went out a door when she's not supposed to and entered a space outdoors that was dangerous. And then we would pick her up and bring her over to her cube, as we called it. So we had a special little potty space in our yard. And this was where we dropped her down to do her business. Now we did this because giving her the whole yard, much like giving her the whole house, was super distracting for her. And we wanted to teach her that when we go outside to do potty time, like you do your business within like five minutes, unless we're going outside to have fun. But most of the time during the day, it's just to do your business. So we would put her down in there and some realistic things you can expect is that they're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't want to be in here. I want to be with you. And they like jump up on the side of their little cube and try to get to you. And it's very cute and very hard to ignore, but just don't look them in the eye. And then we would give her five minutes to do her business. And if she didn't do her business within five minutes, we would go back in. While you are waiting during these five minutes, you give your potty cues. So for us, that was always go potty. <laughs> There's a baby blowing bubbles. I'm sorry. So for us, that was always go potty. And you want to, if you can, you want to say that cue when they pee or poo, like while they're doing it. And then once they do it, lots of praise. Yay, good girl, good boy, that type of vibe. Or if you're not doing treats, you do whatever your reward is for that situation. But you want to make it like they just did the best thing ever. Havanese are very people pleasing dogs. So hype this up, make them feel so accomplished and special when they do the right thing. When was she able to hold her bladder for more than an hour or two? So I don't remember where we read this, but somewhere we heard that your puppy can hold their bladder for as many months old they are in hours. So if you have like a three month old puppy, they can hold it for three hours. No, we did not find that to be true. Um, with Pistachio, when she was like a three month puppy, she would go like 30 minutes without an accident and then have another one like 15 minutes later and then hold it for like two to three hours and then have like three in a row. And like, it was just a whole mess. So the biggest thing that helped with that for us was just crating her. So when we would leave the house, we would crate her and we wouldn't leave her in the crate during the day longer than like three hours. But during the time, she would just nap. Like we could tell, we could see it on this little puppy cam that we have. She was just chilling. She was just sleeping. Because she was in the crate and she didn't want to soil her bed, she would hold it. And she just built up some resilience with her bladder. It wasn't hard for her. It wasn't a huge challenge. She was just sleeping. But we quickly saw from our crating that she was building up more bladder resilience. By the time she was four months old, I guess we knew that she could hold it for more than an hour or two. She might choose to just have an accident anyways, but we knew that she was very capable of holding it for that long. How do you handle nighttime potty breaks? This is like the worst part of having a puppy, right? Like the anxiety that comes with knowing your dog's going to get you up in the middle of the night is really bad. In the beginning, we would just wait for her to cry in her crate because we were crating her at night so she was on the nightstand next to me and I would just like stick my fingers in there to comfort her um, but we'd wait for her to cry and if my fingers weren't enough to sort of calm her down then we would take her out to use the bathroom but we also knew that realistically she should be able to sleep some stretches and not go to the bathroom every hour and what this basically ended up looking was taking her out two times a night and then we decided to just set alarms for those two times a night instead of letting her wake us up first because we didn't want her to draw the connection between, oh, when I whine, I get what I want, which is getting up in the middle of the night and acting like it's daytime. Um, we, we wanted to be the ones to initiate those bathroom breaks and we made them as unfun as possible. This is key. So when we would get her up for a potty break, we did not talk to her. We tried to avoid eye contact. We just picked her up out of the crate, brought her outside to her potty cube, set her down. When she was done, we would praise her. We would say, good girl, good girl. And then we'd bring her back in, put her in her crate, and that was it. We did not want it to be a fun adventure to get up in the middle of the night. We wanted to make it much more fun to sleep and be well rested. And she figured that out pretty quickly. Probably within a month, she was done with her nighttime potty breaks, but it was a long month, you know? Those two set alarms of the night became one set alarm, 
and then eventually became no set alarms and we got our life back. But yeah, I know in, in the time that they're still getting up at night, it feels very long and endless, but it does come to an end. It was mind blowing to me when I realized she wants to sleep. My dog wants to sleep just like me. She likes her sleep. It is nighttime. She is tired. Her body needs restorative sleep and they will get there soon. They, it doesn't take too long. They, they like their sleep just like humans. How often did you need to take her outside at six, seven, eight months? So those adolescent years. So by the time she was six months, it felt like she was almost potty trained. Like we were just having like couple accidents a month. Usually when something was weird, like we had guests over or we were in a different room, something like that. For context, nowadays we let her out probably four times a day. So morning potty break, right when she gets up and then one around like lunch and then one in the afternoon and then one before bed. Now there's lots of other times she hits her doorbell to go out just cause she likes being outside. But those are the times that we kind of know that she actually needs to use the bathroom. But when she was like six months old, it was probably more like five to six times a day. Um, it's kind of hard to know if they actually need to go out that much or if it's just like that's what's working. And we always like to be overly cautious so that she wouldn't have accidents. So if it felt like it'd been a while since we let her out, we would just let her out. But yeah, I don't know, maybe five to six times a day. I don't really remember too well, to be honest, but that's my best guess. But to be clear, these days I know she can hold it for five hours easily during the day, probably more, but we just don't really leave the house that much. I know plenty of people who leave their dogs home when they go to work, so their dogs must be holding it for like eight hours. So adult dogs can do incredible things. How did you train Pistachio to use a doorbell? I actually have a whole video on this, so you can watch that. She still uses her doorbell to this day and we love it. We did start with sort of like a jingle bell in the beginning that like I didn't find to be very effective. As a puppy, she just wanted to play with it. And then when she was older, she like wouldn't hit it hard enough to make sound, but she thought she was doing the right thing to signal. So this one is pretty hard to get wrong because it actually is an automated doorbell. So check out that video. My dad just did this with their puppy when she was six months old and she is now a pro at it at seven months old. So it is possible for puppies to learn it. So potty training is hard. It is mentally and physically exhausting, cleaning up those messes, wishing your dog could just understand the concept. It gets frustrating, but there's an awful lot of potty trained dogs in the world and they do learn. It just can take a little while. So best of luck puppy parents. I've been in the trenches with you. I understand this is no easy task, but keep at it. They'll figure it out. And it is such a good life when they do. Having a dog that's potty trained is what most of your dog's life is going to be with you. And it is a real pleasure to be able to just coexist with this little animal that doesn't make a mess in your home. So keep at it. You're doing great. Bye.